Hello, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing my favorite books that I've read so far this year in the year of 2021. And I really enjoy doing these like halfway through the year favorites of the year video. A lot of these books probably will be included in my end of this year's favorite video for the entire year, but I do like to do a midway through the year check-in and just kind of share with you some of my favorite books that I've read so far this year. I've had a ridiculous amount of five-star books this year and I've had so many books that I'm absolutely obsessed with, so this list is pretty extensive. But before we do jump into the books, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Native for sponsoring today's video. And if you didn't know, Native is a deodorant company and I've switched to using their deodorants because they are aluminum free. I've been using Native deodorant for a couple of months now and I really love the texture of their deodorant and I love that it goes on it's not sticky and it dries quickly which is very important especially in these hot summer months these deodorants are vegan and cruelty free and they use ingredients that are familiar to you like coconut oil and shea butter I especially like using native deodorants because they are long lasting and they keep you smelling fresh even after a full day even after a workout native also offers a plastic free version of their deodorant using the same formula but with more sustainable packaging Packaging. The three scents that I have that I've been using daily is lavender and rose, coconut and vanilla, and cucumber and mint. I've been using this coconut and vanilla one so much, it's almost completely gone. And the coconut and vanilla is definitely my favorite out of these three, but I'm also a huge fan of the lavender and rose. They also have a wide range of some new summer scents that they just released. And Native has so much more to offer. Attending to all your personal care needs, they also do amazing body washes and toothpaste so that you can treat yourself. So three deodorants are typically around $36, but when you use my link with the code GABBYREADS3, you can get all three of these for $24, which gives you 33% off your order. And just a heads up, you can also use my code to get 20% off if you want to try their body wash or their toothpaste. So yeah, thank you so much to Native for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the books. I kind of wanted to separate these into different genres and things because... I do have a lot of thrillers and horrors on this list, and then I have a couple young adult, a couple romances, and then I have a few books that don't really fit into any of those genres. So I thought I would start with the books that don't really fit into any of the genres. The first one is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This one is like a sci-fi adventure, it's a thriller, it's a mystery, it takes place in outer space. And this one is something that's a little bit out of my comfort zone, I just, I don't read a lot of sci-fi. But oh my god, I'm obsessed with this book. I loved it so much. We're following this astronaut named Ryland who wakes up in outer space on a spaceship and all of his crewmates are dead and he has no idea what his own name is and he has no memories. And we just kind of follow him as he tries to navigate what the fuck happened and what he's doing on the spaceship and what even happened to the world. And this book was just so much fun. I will warn you, it is pretty heavy sci-fi at times, which, you know, a lot of it did go way over my head. But this book was so surprising because because it was hilarious. Like this character has such a great sense of humor. It was so heartwarming. Like this book actually made me cry and I just loved the direction that this book ended up going in. It was so touching and so beautiful and I just loved it so much. Like I will scream about this book all year long because I'm obsessed. And then another book that doesn't really fit into any of those genres is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna because this one is a historical fiction novel and of course Kristen Hanna is the queen of historical fiction. Everything she writes, it makes me cry. Like Kristen Hanna will do that to you. This book takes place during the Great Depression. It takes place during the Dust Bowl and the Dust Bowl was just a complete nightmare of a situation and I can't even imagine how people live through that. And this book Book will humble you. Oh my gosh, this book made me incredibly grateful for everything that I have in my life and I just felt so connected to these characters and this family and what they had to go through and this book was just absolutely stunning. Like I cried my fucking eyes out reading this book. The next three that I have are some of my favorite young adult-ish books that I've read so far this year. The first one is A Lot's Away and this one doesn't really fit into any of these categories either because it's kind of like a fancy magical kind of book which is very outside of my comfort zone. But this book just follows this young girl who finds out that her cousin has just recently passed away But she thinks there was something very suspicious and mysterious about his death So she's planning on doing some more investigating into that and Ellie and her family have some magical abilities that can help them 
deal with all of this situation. This book is just very, very interesting and I was just really fascinated by this world and I really connected and adored this main character so much. I also really loved Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. This one is technically the prequel to The Hate You Give because we follow Star's dad from The Hate You Give when he was a teenager and we kind of follow him as he's navigating how to be a teen parent. And that's like one of my favorite book tropes is when someone unexpectedly finds out that they're going to have a child and we kind of get to see their character grow and mature as they get ready to become a parent. I don't know why that's just always been something I've really enjoyed reading about and this book especially was so touching. There were so many moments in this book where it nearly brought me to tears and I just really love and adore Maverick's character in this book. And then another young adult book that I did not expect to love as much as I did is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson because this one is a young adult thriller, which is usually not my thing. I usually just don't really like young adult thrillers, but this book was so much fun. I highly recommend the audiobook because the audiobook is so immersive and engaging and it has like really cool sound effects and when, when they do phone calls and stuff, it sounds like they're actually on a phone. Like it's just really cool. But this one just follows this young girl who is going to be diving back into this murder investigation for her senior project at school because everyone in their small town knows the story of this young girl who was murdered by her boy boyfriend who and then the boyfriend killed himself like the next day and it's always been talked about but she doesn't think the boyfriend did it she thinks that the boyfriend was wrongly accused and so she's diving back into this case to try and figure out what actually happened and this is just so entertaining it's so good and I know that this is the first book in a series so like I need to get on that and like read the next few books but this one it was so good it was so much fun with that I thought that would be the perfect segue to jump into more thrillers and horror books that have been my favorites so far this year. The first one I want to talk about is The Push and this one I hesitate to call it a thriller because it's being marketed as a thriller but I would more agree with the inside flap of this book which says it's a psychological drama about the breaking and making of a family and a woman whose experience of motherhood is nothing at all what she hoped it to be and that is exactly how I would describe this book. Like this book is absolutely terrifying but I think if you go into it expecting it to be a thriller you might be a little bit disappointed but this is one of the most amazing intense character studies of a book that I've ever read and this book we're just following this woman who becomes a mother to this daughter who is the freaking spawn of Satan like her daughter is just like the worst this book just brings up every fear that I have with parenthood like the idea that maybe you'll regret having a kid after like immediately after you have it and maybe think you're not ready for this you're not cut out for this all of the thoughts that this character has in this book is exactly what I fear with parenthood and this book was just incredible it was so good and I do think the second half of this book reads more like a thriller in my opinion in my personal opinion I was shocked by the ending of this book. I was absolutely shocked. Another one of my favorite thrillers of the year is The Maidens by Alex Michaelitis. I have just found an author that I just genuinely love. Like Alex Michaelitis, like The Silent Patient was his first book and then this book. Like both of his books have been five stars for me. I just absolutely love it and I vibe with his thrillers. I don't know what it is about his writing but I'm obsessed. I love his writing. And this book is really great because it has those like dark academia vibes to it, you know, because it takes place on a college campus and there's this professor who teaches Greek mythology and he's getting accused of murdering one of his students. And this book is just so fascinating. I love this professor's like really strange relationship that he has with his students. It just feels almost like a cult or something. Like it's just very interesting. And I do love thrillers that take place on a college campus and so this was no exception. And then we have The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb. This book is the most like small town gossip moms kind of vibe. It takes place in a small town in Texas and we're following this main character who just moved there from Chicago and she starts to get involved with this group of moms who call themselves the hunting wives because every Friday night they get together and like shoot their guns and the leader of their pack is named Margot Banks and she's kind of like the Regina George of these moms and our main character starts to get obsessed with this girl Margot Banks and it's so interesting because not only do we get the like small town moms suburban gossip in this book but we also get like like a main character who's probably like a stalker and like low-key obsessed with her. It's just so much fun. It's such a fun time and like 
I just, I didn't expect anything about this book. Like where it went, I was like, what the heck? Every page I was like, what is happening? Oh my God, obsessed. And then we have another thriller that's about obsession. Like clearly I just love thrillers that deal with a main character who is unhinged and obsessed because we have Just One Look by Lindsay Cameron. This book actually goes on sale at the end of this month, July 27th. It follows this girl who works in this office where there's like a bunch of hotshot lawyers working in this office and she has to go through the emails and like flag emails that look suspicious and like whatever. And so she has access and she's able to see some of the emails that this lawyer is sending that works in the building and she starts to get obsessed with him and she starts reading all of the emails that he sends to his wife and all of the emails that he sends in his work and then she starts to stalk him and his wife in real life and oh my god this book mm, and I'm pretty sure I finished this book all within one sitting because I had to know where the fuck this was going. Like, it was just so entertaining and definitely one of my favorite thrillers that I read so far this year. And then we have Finlay Donovan is Killing It, which I'm debating if this is, like, my number one favorite of the year or not. Like, I don't really know, but I'm obsessed with this book. And this is one of the most, like, fun, cozy murder mystery books that I've ever read. I don't know if this would be considered, like, cozy murder mystery or not, but this book just feels so lighthearted and fun. It kind of has like a similar vibe to the Netflix show Dead to Me. Like it feels very similar to that where you're just like following these two women and there's like murder and there's like craziness. And this book we're following this writer named Finlay Donovan and she is in a Panera Bread with her agent when she's like telling her her plans for her next book which involves a lot of murder because she's like a crime writer. And then somebody overhears her in the Panera Bread and assumes that she's like a hitman and they offer to pay her $50,000 to kill her husband. And then we go on this wild journey of Finlay trying to figure out like how to go about this situation and what she should do. And so this book was just so much fun. It was so great. It has some really great side supporting characters as well. And I just adore like this book is so wholesome. It's so good. And it ends on like the best fucking plot twist. Oh my God. And I'm stoked that this author confirmed that this book series is gonna have four books. Like. I can't get enough of it. I'm so excited. I'm already so excited to read the next one. Right, and then I have three horror books on this list that have been some of my favorite horror of the year so far. The first one is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. This one also goes on sale later in July on July 20th. And this one is just like a haunted house story, but like to the extreme. And this book is just so unexpected. You know, if you just go into this thinking it's gonna be like your average horror book, I feel like you're gonna be blown away by where this book ends up going. This book, we're just following this married couple, Nathan and Maddie, and they have a son, Oliver, and they're going to be moving back into the house of Nathan's childhood home where he was abused by his father. And now his father's recently passed away and he left them his childhood home. But Nathan is like, that seems strange. Like, why would my dad do that? Because he's a piece of shit. And things start to go all kinds of south in this house for them. This house is just like not a cool place to be. There's also this very interesting story happening right from the prologue of this book about this serial killer who lived in this small exact same small town years and years before who was put to death. The way that that ties into this story is also very interesting. Like I really just love small town horror books like this. Like it's just so so creepy, so atmospheric. It was just so, so good. And I, I just highly recommend checking it out. And then the other two books are from the lovely author, Jennifer McMahon, and that is The Winter People and The Drowning Kind. The Winter People is the first one that I read in January. And this book is probably gonna be in my top 10 of the year. And then The Drowning Kind just published in April. And this one is also fantastic. And it has a very similar vibe to The Winter People if you're looking for something similar to The Winter People. But I think The Winter People's definitely my favorite of the two. This book feels major Pet Cemetery vibes. Oh my goodness. If you are a fan of Pet Cemetery, you need to read this book. This book just follows this small town and we get to follow one point of view that's like in the way past in like the early 1900s and then we follow a present day chapter. Both timelines are taking place in the same small town and there's people that are going missing in the towns. They don't know what the fuck is going on and what happened to them. And it was just so good. Like, I don't want to say anything more without spoiling you because it is just... <laughs> So shocking, so good. And then The Drowning Kind also has like a similar thing going on where we follow a point of view that's like way in the past and then we follow a present day point of view. And the two timelines are also taking place in the same small town, but this book has to do with this strange, magical, like cursed water. And this book was also just very fascinating, very fucking creepy. Oh my God, if you have any kind of fear of water or like something lurking in the water or something walking out of the water, then I highly, highly recommend this one. 
All right, and then the last three books that I have on my list are some romance novels. I've barely read any romance this year, to be honest, but these are definitely my top three favorite romance books that I've read this year. The first one is The X Talk by Rachel Solomon. This one is so much fun because it takes place in Seattle, which, you know, I live in Washington, so that's pretty cool. Follows these two radio co-hosts. The radio station is dying and they need something to be cool again. And so she comes up with this idea of The X Talk, which is going to be like a radio segment of the show where they bring on a couple who are exes and they kind of talk about why they're exes and like what went wrong in their relationship and they get questions that they can answer and things like that. But because the radio station does not have the budget to actually hire people who are exes, they want Shay and the other guy Dominic who works at the station to pretend that they are exes. And this book is just so great because it's almost like fake dating but it's even like further than that because they didn't even get the chance to fake date because now they just have to pretend to be fake exes but it's so cute because like you have to know so much about each other to be able to pull off being fake exes and this was just the most fun like bantery cute romance novel i absolutely adore dominic's character and i also really love that there's an age gap between these two characters and that she's older i find that that's like so rare in books <laughs> this book had me wanting to start a podcast and wanting to list like i wish the x talk was real like i would listen to it it sounds so cool Another one of my favorites that actually does also take place in Seattle is Hang the Moon by Alexandria Bellafleur. This one is technically the sequel to Written in the Stars, which came out last year, and I also really love that book. And this book was just so cute. Like, these characters just have the best chemistry. It was so adorable. Like, I was so giddy for them, and like, this honestly might be my favorite romance book that I've read so far this year. And I'm so happy that this book is a part of a series because there's another book coming and I just adore this series so much because I love the talk of like astronomy and astrology and I just really connect and relate to these characters so much. Like they're just so cute. The last book that I have on this list is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This one was a complete surprise because I wasn't a huge fan of Beach Read last year and I'm not a huge fan of the friends to lovers trope so I honestly expected to not like this book very much. This this book just blew me away. It is so freaking cute. We follow Poppy and Alex who became best friends in college and every single summer they've taken a vacation together and now we're following them 10 years after college and they haven't taken a vacation together in quite some time and we get to follow them as they are reconnecting and they're going to go on one more vacation together. So we get to follow this vacation that they're taking 10 years later but then in alternate chapters we do get to see some of the other vacations that they've taken together throughout the years. Their friendship is just so cute. This book is such perfect escapism, especially during the summertime because it makes you feel like you're on a vacation while you're reading this book and oh my god, I just miss the feeling of being on a vacation. This book made me want to be on a beach so badly. These characters are just genuinely so cute together and like, oh my god, Alex is like the most precious soft cinnamon roll. Like he's just so, like genuinely so sweet. And I just had such a great time reading this book and I like I can honestly see myself rereading this book because I just loved it that much like it was so cute. <laughs> right so those are all of my favorite books of the year so far. I'm curious to know what are some of your favorite books that you've read so far this year. Do you agree with any of the books that I have on this list? Like are they also some of your favorites of the year so far? And if not what are some of your favorite books of the year so far. I'm so excited to have already read so many incredible books this year, but I'm also nervous because it's going to make it so hard for me to narrow down my list at the very end of this year when I do like my final favorite books of 2021 video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!